All right, good evening, church. I hope you are having an amazing week so far. Hopefully, you are on your path to recovery or you are staying well and staying safe. And so, as you know, <coughs> excuse me, most of us here, uh, we had a lot of people get sick. And I was one of, one of many, and uh, everybody seems to be recovering well. Uh, for my own experience, it just seems to be hanging on longer than I would appreciate. And so I still kind of have this lingering cough that comes around the more I talk. So I'm going to do my best to get through tonight, but uh, hopefully you're doing well. And I want you to know that we are praying for you. Um, a huge praise report for Jesse Watkins. Um, it came through on the prayer chain last night. And yeah, he fell off, sound like off a roof. It says it fell about 30 feet. Uh, was rushed to the hospital but praise the Lord for your prayers that uh, no broken bones and he he came home last night and is on his way to recovery so you know thank you uh, everyone for diligently praying for them and and uh, I we know that prayer works and so <clears throat> with that being said quick update we are not right now we're still not doing midweek services and we will still have Sunday morning service and we will still have prayer so those are the two things that are going on right now and we'll start reopening things here kind of as people, <coughs> excuse me, uh, can uh, keep getting better. So what I want to read today is out of Acts chapter 9. So turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 9. This was actually um, yesterday's reading. <coughs> excuse me. It was actually yesterday's reading, but I wanted to share with it some of the thoughts I had. So here we go. Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 1. <coughs> Sorry. It says, Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters <coughs> from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he was traveling, it happened that as he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Now, Saul was a man who, who was a Pharisee who was uh, working in the synagogue or in kind of the local church at the time. And, and he felt he had, we had this new following of people following Jesus. And it didn't follow with what the, the church was teaching. And so he was going out and bringing people out to kind of bring this, this, this uh, religious group that was forming and gathering and <coughs> starting to expand. And starting to bring them in and... Um, Basically, they even, they even had killed some of them. And so he, was, he asked for permission to go and, and try to find all these people in these religious groups that were coming up that were following Jesus. They called themselves the way. And he was going to basically imprison them uh, or, or even martyr, make martyrs out of them. And so this is what happened. So as he's traveling to Damascus to go and get all these uh, hidden churches and disciples and stuff, this is what happens. It says, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse 5 says this, And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told to you what you must do. The men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. I just try to imagine this scene, that here they all are on their, their donkeys or their horses or, or whatever, their right, camels for all I know, I don't know. Uh, but here they are as they're, as they're traveling there, they, they hear this, they see this bright light, and they hear this voice from heaven just thundering down, calling out the man Saul that they're following. Now, uh, I think it would be a little bit terrifying. It says they were terrified. It says, the men who traveled, they stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. And in verse 8 says, Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. So here are these, <coughs> excuse me, here are these men who they see their leader, who was basically, follow me, this is what we're going to do. And he opens his eyes after hearing this voice call him out by name. And they realize he's blind. And so they lead him into the city. And I'm not really sure exactly what their plan was. But they, they just kind of turn him over. And whether he goes to a house, it says he goes to a house on Straight Street. And whether they were with him or not. Or, or they just kind of said, well, you do your thing. And when you're feeling better, come and get us. Or, you know, how that all worked. Or we'll meet you down at the synagogue. And, and here's the part I want us to catch, though. 
because there's a story about the man named Ananias that really sticks out to me. It says in verse 10, Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. I love that Ananias, is, he, he, he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was, he was in the church. He was seeking the Lord. He says he has a vision. The Lord says, Ananias, what do you want? He says, Lord, okay. Whatever you want, I'm ready to go do it. Whatever you want. Uh, you want me to go share the gospel with the neighbors? I mean, that'd be fantastic. You want me to go pray for, you know, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so? I'd love to go, you know, you see all the things just kind of going through their mind. He says, the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying. And he has seen a vision of a, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So you have Ananias over at this house, and he's praying, he's seeking the Lord, and he's saying, what do you want me to do? And God says, I want you to go over to this man named Saul, and I want you to pray for him. And then you have Paul on this side who, he believed in the Lord, and he believed what he was doing was right, kind of ridding all these radical Christians that were following this Jesus. So he's praying to God too. And he says, he gets a vision saying, there's going to be a man come to you. And he's going to pray for you. And he's, you're going to receive your sight back. And so you have Paul on this side waiting. And you have Ananias on this side trying to decide what to do. And I love what Ananias says. Because I think it's what, what I would say or what all of us would say. In verse 13, it says, Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard many things about this man. Are you sure Saul of Tarsus is the one you want me to pray for? He says, I've heard how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority uh, from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. <coughs> So it's basically like we have a man that's looking for you, that's going to put you in prison, that's going to uh, persecute you, possibly even kill you. And Jesus says, I want you to go to that man and heal him because I have plans for that man. And I think part of this reminds me of just how willing and how far are we willing to go when God calls us to go. How crazy could it sound when God calls us to go? Would God call us to go and talk to someone that we would never want to talk to, that we would never want to help, that we just would, would just assume a void. And God calls him the, to go. And I love the Lord doesn't say, hey, do what I said. He says, listen, go. <clears throat> In verse 15, he says, but the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and sons of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer, <coughs> excuse me, for my name's sake. I mean, Saul had, Saul whose name actually uh, is also referred to as Paul, uh, God, God was going to deal with him in another way. I think sometimes Ananias, and even we think, well, why, do, why should I help that person? They've, they've done some terrible things. Why should I go and help this, you know, so-and-so? Or why should I go and even support so-and-so when they've kind of, you know, they've dug their own grave? And ultimately, it comes down to what has God called you to do? What has God called me to do? And if God calls us to do it, then we have to go do it. It's not our job to play judge and jury and say, well, you know what, I think they should have to pay for their things before we go and help them. That's for God to do. And, and we see here that God, uh, God was telling that, and I said, listen, I will take care of Paul. Paul's going to have to suffer many, many things. There's a lot of things he's going to have to do. He's going to go through. He's going to be beat more than any of you guys. He's, he's going to be shipwrecked. He's going to, I mean, there's all these things that he's going to have to suffer. That's not your concern. We need to make sure we do what God has called us to do. Verse 17, and this is ultimately is, is the main part, is that we have to be obedient. Verse 17, so Ananias departed and entered the house, and after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which... You were uh, coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, <coughs> excuse me, and he regained his sight and he got up and he was baptized. And he was baptized. There was this change in his life and he was baptized. You know, we're going to be doing baptisms here. Um, we've had to push him out a few weeks, but we're going to be doing baptisms. And, and this is part of when you have this experience and this change uh, with the Lord, then it's time to be baptized as well. It says, and he took food and was strengthened. Now this, you know, obedience to what God has called us is one of the main things. What is God calling you to do? And some of us, it might be like Ananias, where we're supposed to go and, and talk to somebody, or we're supposed to go do something we don't want to do. 
And obedience also comes from like Saul. Here it is. He just gets baptized. He just gets his eyesight back. He's able to see it. It says, For several days he was with the disciples <coughs> Excuse me, at Damascus. And verse 20 says, And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Now, I love the, that Paul instantly just goes right back and begins to preach the gospel. You know, we shared a little bit on Sunday about, you know, the whole thing, the disciples, the early church. It was just about sharing what they've seen and heard. And that's all we are called to do. Begin to share what you've seen and heard. Be obedient to what God is calling you to do. Don't just initially shut down any thought. As you seek the Lord and say, God, what do you want me to do? You have to be willing to walk through that and see what God will do and see who God can change. Maybe you'll be leading the next Saul or the next Paul to the Lord that'll be this next great missionary. And so uh, be obedient in that. I hope that encourages you tonight just a little bit, you know, about our obedience. So anyways, let me pray with you and... Uh, and thank you for spending time with me tonight. Father, we just thank you for each and everyone watching this. Lord, we pray that you continue to just uh, bring health around our church, Lord, and our church family, Lord. Continue, we pray for Jesse tonight, Lord, as he continues to just recover, Lord, him and his family, Lord. Uh, be with them, Lord. Watch over them. Father, give us an opportunity to share your love with someone else this week, Lord. Help us to be obedient and walk in that obedience, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless. Have a great week, and we hope to see you soon.